So in today's video, I'm helping my friends Katie and Kevin replace their old old range hood with something a little more modern. They're in the process of repainting their cabinets, and the old one just didn't quite fit in. Before purchasing a new one, you must know where yours vents at. If it vents out the side, top, or back. If you don't see a vent inside the cabinet above it or to the side of it, it must vent out the back. You want the new one to be the same so that your holes for that will match up. Otherwise, you have to put a new hole either in your cabinet and into your exterior wall or get one that doesn't vent. The tools needed for today's job are drill and drill bits, an inch and a half hole saw or an inch and a half paddle bit, as my grandfather used to call them, an impact driver with bits, or you can even get by with just a screwdriver with bits, but the impact driver would be better for doing the lag bolts into the studs. Of course, you want our trusty electrical tester so we don't electrocute ourselves. Some electrical tape, and then you need a Sharpie or a pencil or something to mark your holes with. Now we have our tools, let's get to work. Since we did not install this, we don't know how this is put up. So, the first thing we're going to do is take this big plate off in hopes to find our mounting um, screws and our electrical supply. It should all be underneath this big plate, at least I'm guessing. And we'll get this last screw off back here and try to pull this down. I would recommend a drop cloth over the stove. I wasn't thinking about this when I did this because I was just trying to get the job done. See, it didn't come down by hand. No matter how much you clean it, there's always grease up in the corners and that's pretty much holding it up there. So we take our screwdriver and pry it off. And that's why I recommend a drop cloth because things will come down. Now that we have that off, let's take a peek inside. And you'll see that box right there. That should be our main electric coming in. So we'll get our screwdriver and get that box off. It's just one screw right there. It's actually a quarter inch nut. So you could just use a nut driver or if you have a screwdriver like mine, you can take the bit off and use the part where the bit goes in. We'll get that unscrewed. Open that up and we should find our main electrical supply. So now we're going to grab our electrical tester and see if it's hot. And we press the button. If it flashes, then it's still live. Now normally I would go and kill the power. But since I'm not at my own place and I'm working at somebody else's place, I don't want to go through trying to find out where that power supply is at or kill power to something they don't want power killed to. So I can go ahead and take it off by hand myself. Now, I don't recommend you doing this if you're not comfortable. If you're not comfortable, please go turn the breaker off. No one needs to get electrocuted. But I do, I've been doing electric for a long time, so I'm comfortable working with it with it still being live. Now we're going to do it the black wire first, which is the hot wire. So we're going to take the wire nut off. You want to be careful doing this because this is the hot wire, just the one that can shock you. Now you can pull it away by hand or you can take a pair of pliers. I'm going to use a pair of pliers in this case just because I'm dealing with the black. And pull that one off. That one right there, so the unit is not live. It's perfectly fine. The one coming out the wall is the live one. I'll show you with the tester. Put the tester on it. You'll see it flash. That tells us it's still live. So we want to make sure that doesn't touch anything, especially when you go to pull this unit down. We're going to take a piece of electrical tape. We're going to carefully wrap it around the end of that wire, covering up the copper, just to make sure it doesn't touch against anything and spark. Be careful here. You don't want to touch the copper part of that wire coming out the wall. While you're doing this, you will get electrocuted. Now that we have that one off and protect it, we're going to bend off to the side some. We can focus on the white. So same thing here. We're going to take the wire nut off. Now, it should not be live. Sometimes the white wire will have some back feed through it in the neutrals. If it's hooked up to something else and something else is running, you can get some electricity through there. But nine times out of 10, that white wire is dead. So we'll go ahead and pull the wire off. You see, I just did it by hand. I'm not that concerned with it. I will still tape this wire just to be sure it doesn't touch anything, just in case we get a little back feed through it. I mean, we don't really want to electrocute ourselves or at the very least scare the mess out of ourselves. So we'll get both of these wrapped up with tape. Now we're set to find our screws and get this unit off the wall. So the first thing we're going to remove is the nut that holds our electrical connection, basically the BX wire from the wall, to this unit. So you take a big screwdriver and you're basically just going to tap on one of the edges of that until it gets loose. It's a little awkward to work up in here because we're working over a stove and under the hood. We get that on there, 
take a hammer or a pair of pliers or something. It shouldn't take much to just tap that loose, just enough to turn it by hand. Once we get that loose, we should be able to spin it off by hand and it will come down across the wires. I found four screws that are holding this up. It was actually screwed into the cabinet above, not to the wall. So we'll take a screwdriver. It's old, so we said before, when we work with things that are old, it's usually flathead screws. And we'll go ahead and get it done. We'll get this one screw off here. Then we'll probably go ahead and just grab the impact, which will be faster. I know I'm blocking the camera. I'm sorry. I have a bad habit of just getting the job done more than I am about focusing on the video. But we'll go ahead and get these screws out. And now the old unit is not as heavy as a newer unit because it's not a microwave inside of it. But when you get to the last two screws, I recommend getting somebody to help hold it for you so that it does not fall on your head. Now that all the screws are off, let's go ahead and pull it down. Now we want to be careful with this because we still have those wires that need to come out the back. So we're going to slowly pull it down, pull our wires out the back. This is why we had them covered because we don't want to touch the unit while we're taking it out. And go ahead and sit on the floor. Now it is going to be a little dirty because again, years of grease. Doesn't matter how much you clean it, there's going to be grease inside there. Now that's off, let's get ready to install the new one. So, inside the box, we'll find our mounting plate, which is also works as a template for this unit. Some units have a paper template, this one that you use the mounting plate as a template. Our bag of hardware. And of course the plate that goes inside the microwave. And, well, most importantly, the unit itself. Now you see there's a plug on the end of this unit, which is going to make things a little bit difficult for us considering the unit we took down is actually hardwired into the wall. Remember the two wires that are inside the unit? This is the BX coming out of the wall. It was hardwired in, it was not plugged in. So the new unit requires it to be plugged in. So in order to do that, an outlet must be installed inside the cabinet above. Now I recommend you get an electrician to do this. I did it myself. I can show you in another video how to install an outlet. Now that that is installed, we take our template, which for this unit is also the aluminum backing plate, and mark our holes that go into the cabinet. The first hole is for the electric to go through, and then for this unit, it's just two holes at the front that help support the microwave when it's up there. The cool thing about this unit is that all the instructions are actually printed on the backing plate, which is also your template. So you don't have to go back and forth between a piece of paper. You get all the work done and all your instructions are right there. Help make the job go a little bit faster. Now that our holes are marked, we can go ahead and drill. So first we'll drill the two front holes. These holes are for the screws that help support the microwave when we tilt it up into the bracket. Then we drill out the electric. You see I'm using a paddle bit there. I'll drill a little bit just so it pokes through some. Then I'll finish the drill from inside the cabinet because I want the inside of the cabinet part to be nice and clean because that's what you'll see. You won't see the other part because it'll be up against the microwave. Now that it's all drilled out, we'll go ahead and grab our bracket or our template here and make our holes for the wall. We're going to be able to mount it to at least one stud, which you only get one stud, because by code, studs are 16 inches on center. This is a 30 inch opening. So we got the right side with the lag bolts that are supplied inside the hardware kit into the stud. The left side inside the hardware kit, we got the hollow wall anchors, and we use that to hold that side up. So with two lag bolts going into the stud and the two hollow wall anchors, it should be more than enough to hold the unit up. So once we get everything secure, our bracket looks like this. Now we're gonna grab at least a second person to get the unit up against the wall. So with this unit, we pick it up and on the bottom is two slots that go into the two little hooks on the bottom of this bracket. And then you pull the cord up through the top and then you secure the top with the two screws. I know the camera angle is horrible here, but it is a tight space to work with. So we get it up in there. Again, it takes a second person. We try to get it up onto the hooks. Once we get it on the hooks, we'll go ahead and pull our cord through the top. As we're feeding that through, again, it's going to take two people because one person has to hold the unit while another person's pulling the cord. So as we're raising the unit up, we pull the cord up. And there we go. Now I get our screws for the top. And of course our impact to help tighten everything down. Now the impact isn't necessary. I mean, it could be done with a regular screwdriver. One thing I did to those back the screws out 
and get some bigger washers and then screw it back down nice and tight because it is going to real thin wood at the base of the cabinet which really isn't meant to support that weight. I know it's kind of hard to see with the owner's head in a way. And there's the final product. Now, a few tips before we take this project on. One, find out which way it vents. So check the cabinets around your old vent. Look to see if it vents out the top or out the side. If you don't see a vent tunnel, then you have to assume it vents out the back or it doesn't vent at all. Secondly, look for an outlet in any one of those cabinets. If you do not see an outlet, then you have to assume that it's hardwired. In which case, you're going to need a licensed electrician to undo the electric from your old hood and install an outlet in the cabinet above for the new one. But thanks again for checking out my video. Please check out my other videos. Click that subscribe button. I'm trying to get in to release a video a week. Looking forward to doing a project back at home so I can get my you know, unhelpful assistant to help me out.